Hey guys, how's it going? Back here with another video. So in this video here, what I want to show you is the the main bit point of the video is to show you the size difference between the Tournament 55 and the Millennium Exclusive in case you are interested in either one of these boards. Um, the Tournament 55, just as the name suggests, is 55 centimeters on each side or that's 21 and three quarters of an inches or about that. And the Millennium Exclusive is 40 centimeters on each side and about 15 and three quarters of an inch on each side. Um, other than that, um, the size different, that's the main difference here. I mean, there's basically the exclusive, is, the exclusive is just a smaller version of the Tournament 55 in essence. There are a few small differences, but I don't think they're, for me, they don't make a difference. Um, for example, with my, exclusive board my light squares are a little bit lighter than my squares on the tournament 55 the piece set is a little bit different and the main thing you'll notice in that is that the knights are quite different but either way i like both sets and the way you adjust the led on the tournament 55 is by pressing the gold plated um millennium emblem on the front of the board and how you adjust the LEDs on the exclusive is by using something such as the uh, Chess Classics Element. They've probably done that on purpose because, again, most people that they probably sell in the Tournament 55 to, which the name implies tournament, that they're going to be playing either online tournaments or either hybrid tournaments. So likely the, 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 the crowd of people or the, that they are marketing to is, are not like people who want to play against the computer and things like that at home on the smaller board here. But either way, again, you can play online with either board, you can play hybrid tournaments with either board, and basically the exclusive is just a smaller version of the Tournament 55. Now up on the screen you will also see that I have um, the Chess PGN Master open. And the reason I have that open is that uh, I just wanted to show you how um, you know, you know, I, I've told you the last time I um, made a video of this board. The next time, the next, the next video I was going to make with make with it was with a um, a very interesting position that I had got not too long ago. So let me go ahead and set that up here. So how you do position setup in here is you go to this menu on the left side and go down to Edit Start Position. And then, because obviously it has piece recognition, you can just begin setting pieces on the board and um, things will just begin populating, which is nice. Okay. Now this position, um, what I will say about this, um, it's a very interesting position. Um, I think what it does is really good pattern recognition training. And again, I did not find this line that I'm about to show you. I found it later afterwards with computer analysis. So again, it's somewhat of a computer line, but it's not necessarily impossible to see. And you really need to have, um, you know, this is how you learn chess, obviously, is you learn pattern and pattern recognitions, and then you're able to apply them into, you know, your own games. So once everything here is set up, then you just hit OK. All right. So now um, in this position here, this is white to checkmate in 10 moves. OK, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this out against play against the computer. So let's go ahead and start hit this and start a star stockfish. Um, the first move in this combination or this forced checkmating sequence it would be probably the hardest move to see. But however, it's not impossible. Even if you didn't have a computer analysis, I mean, you still could somewhat use process of elimination, but it would take some creativity to find that first move. So if you want to pause the video, just give it a, give it a shot. You can do that. But otherwise, I'm about to start the checkmating sequence. Now, the very first move you're going to play is Rook to H8. And you think, wow, that is crazy because well, if you think about it, if he takes the rook with the king, queen comes into h6 with a check, and then rook comes down to e8, and it be mate just in two moves, I believe. So the best move here for black is just to go bishop to h7 to kind of disconnect 
that check between the king and the um I mean the, the the rook and the um the rook and the um uh um queen okay so now the next move here again which is kind of hard to find actually the next I say the first two to three moves are gonna be kind of hard to find without some sort of creativity or pattern recognition here that's gonna be queen to g3 and it's kind of the same story again if, if the king was to take this rook here um again because the queen hasn't blocked out on this blocked out on the uh g file and the bishop kind of hems him in here the rook is going to come down and just be checkmate in a couple moves okay so obviously the best move is to go here okay so now uh now here's another now here's this is why this the next move is kind of hard to find again and i think after this everything might be a little bit more clearer but this move here is subtle because you would think while you're attacking you want to keep attacking check and you know so on and so forth but the best move here for white to continue this checkmate sequence is just to go rook to f1 okay and really the best move i mean this is the best move this prolongs the mate the longest and you'll see why once he takes this once he takes this here and the reason why it prolongs the mate the longest is when queen goes to here to g8 um rook just comes down here I mean, this is a you know computer thing, but basically, then you just have to kind of take this here, all right. So the next move is to go here to threaten the queen with the rook, okay, and then rook takes bishop. Did you just dismantling the defense here? And uh, when uh, now when our uh, rook takes, rook takes, uh, rooks just come in threatening with the pawn, threatening to take the pawn. Here, rook comes over, and rook check. Okay, that comes over, and then our uh, rook check. Well, why is that not? Uh, let's see here. So he comes. Oh, he goes here. Okay. Wait a minute. I'm trying to figure out what's. Why is uh? Hold up here. Oh yeah, when he goes, okay, I took the pawn. Okay, and then he steps down. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Now and then um. I got a little ahead of myself at queen takes. And then once that happens here, okay. And then once that happens here, um, and then basically it's just queen to g3 is mate. Yeah, it's a pretty long line. I had to refer to my notes on that just to make sure I got that right for you all. But anyway, that was a really instructive position. You know, if you go back to the original position let's do a position setup one last time real quick let's do edit start position and we'll just uh start this position just put it just put the beginning position back and as we'll see that uh we went from this position here but yeah we went from this position here to that end position we just saw and that was check made in 10. So with that said, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and enjoyed how to um, in, uh, to set up a position in the Chess PGN Master and play it out against a computer so you can study pattern recognition that way. With that said, you guys take care, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.